Evidently, when pressed with incriminating evidence, NASA must rewrite their scientific data and historical record, and thus, everyone must shed themselves of the old data. I'm not exactly sure what incriminating evidence he thinks he uncovered here. You can spare me your pretending not to know. Why don't we have a look at the segment that immediately preceded this? Although in 1999, the BBC told us that the analysis of the Apollo samples led scientists to believe that the Earth and Moon were of the same origin, in 2006, when the BBC reported Smart One's controlled impact, they completely changed their story. Applause marked the end of Europe's first mission to the Moon. The European Space Agency sent its Smart One spacecraft to carry out one final experiment. It involved colliding into the lunar surface at four and a half thousand miles an hour. The plumes of moon dust sent out into space could be seen by astronomers on Earth. It's again a big success for, the, for ESA and I think we have uh, had a spacecraft that provided a lot of new information, a lot of, uh, so to say, training for us and it was really a great mission. The Smart One spacecraft has spent the past three years building up the most detailed picture yet of the moon's surface. Scientists hope that this will help them discover whether the moon really was once part of the Earth. One theory is that 4.6 billion years ago an object the size of Mars collided with the Earth. Somehow the Earth survived and the pieces knocked off it were sent into orbit. Eventually that debris clumped together to form our moon. But doubt was cast on that theory when Apollo astronauts analysed moon rock. They found that it may not once have come from Earth. But earlier, we were told that the analysis of those rocks led scientists to propose that very theory. Why rewrite history? They even used the same CGI animation that they used when initially propping up the giant impact theory. It was sent into orbit. Eventually that debris clumped together to form our moon. But doubt was cast on that theory when Apollo astronauts analysed moon rock. They found that it may not once have come from Earth. The more people considered it, the more Hartman's theory seemed to fit all the known facts about the moon. If it was born from the Earth, its rock would be the same. The heat of the collision explained why the moon was once entirely molten, and any water in its rocks had vaporised. Astonishingly, ESA did nothing to correct the BBC's contradiction. Instead, they echoed and amplified it. On their website, we find... Ever since American astronauts brought back samples of moon rock during the Apollo moon landings of the late 60s and early 1970s, planetary scientists have been struck by the broad similarity of the moon rocks and the rocks found deep in the Earth, in a region known as the mantle. This boosted the theory that the moon formed from debris left over after the Earth was struck a glacing blow by a Mars-sized planet. However, the more scientists looked at the details of the moon rock, the more discrepancies they found between them and the Earth rocks. Most importantly, the isotopes found in the moon rocks did not agree with those found on Earth. When we got the rocks back from the moon, we saw that the um, isotopes of oxygen in the lunar rocks were exactly the same as on the Earth. Now the reason this is important is that we have meteorites from other parts of the solar system and each other part of the solar system has a different composition of these oxygen isotopes, ratio of one type of isotope to the other. The moon has exactly the same as the Earth. So that seemed to rule out the idea that the moon had formed far away and it made it much more plausible that the moon was something made out of the same material that the Earth was made out of. Evidently, when pressed with incriminating evidence, NASA must rewrite their scientific data and historical record, and thus, everyone must shed themselves of the old data. Another fallacy of omission and quote mine combined? Afraid so, but hey, other than comparing apples to oranges, it seems Phil Webb has very little else to do. This is clearly evident throughout his entire video. At the end of the day, he has provided no evidence that terrestrial basalts are different from the Apollo samples. 
He deliberately misrepresented my use of two of my sources to falsely allege fallacy of equivalence on my part when I did no such thing. In the first circumstance, he focused only on oxygen isotope ratios and ignored all the other overwhelming similarities mentioned in the BBC source. And in the second case, he distorted the source's intended meaning to imply that Earth rocks and Apollo samples have different proportions of the same elements, when he knew very well that they have similar proportions of the same elements. His inability to quote my sources correctly leaves him waving his arms in the air and plagiarizing inadequate websites that only compare Apollo samples to terrestrial sedimentary rocks, rather than terrestrial igneous rocks. And in doing so, he applied the characteristics of terrestrial sedimentary rocks to terrestrial rocks in general. I mean, seriously folks, this is high school science he's butchering. High school! Three of the minerals he states are absent in the Apollo samples are common to sedimentary rocks, not igneous rocks like terrestrial basalts and Apollo samples, meaning that anyone who's passed a simple geology test would not necessarily expect to find these minerals in igneous rocks, regardless of whether they came from the Earth or the Moon. Nonetheless, two of these minerals common to sedimentary rocks have been found in many Apollo samples. He also denied the presence of amphibole minerals in the Apollo rocks, despite scientists believing that some high titanium Apollo 11 samples are in fact melted amphiboles due to their similarities to such terrestrial amphibole minerals, like caseutites. And he outright denies that hydrous and oxidation induced minerals, like micas or hematite, have ever been found in the Apollo samples, despite evidence to the contrary. In conclusion, much like Windley, Plate, Brainig, and all the other propagandists before him, Webb has failed to prove that the Apollo samples were not derived from terrestrial igneous rocks. In short, no real surprises at all. Fire, 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 fire,